Hi guys, welcome to this third tutorial in this series of programming Arduino with flow code for absolute beginners. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to use a switch or a push button with Arduino using flow code. Push buttons and switches are digital input and are widely used in electronic projects as most systems need to respond to user comments or sensors. Reading a switch is very useful because a switch is widely used and can also represent a wide range of digital devices in real world like push buttons, limit sensors, level switches, proximity switches, and even keypad because a keypad is basically a combination of switches. Switches come in various form for different purposes. This is a push button. It makes contact when pushed and breaks contact when released. This is a toggle switch. Moving the lever back and forth opens and closes an electric circuit. This is a slide switch. When you move the slider from one position to the other, the electric contact is closed or open. This is a read switch, which is a magnetically actuated switch. When the switch is exposed to a magnetic field, two ferrous metals inside pull together and the connection closes. In the absence of a magnetic field, the switch opens. And this is a limit switch. When an object comes into contact with the actuator, the device make or break an electric connection. Connecting a switch or a push button to Arduino is straightforward. All we need is a pull-up or even a pull-down resistor. This is a pull-up resistor. It's very important to use it. If there is no resistor, it will be difficult to determine the state of the input pin. This is usually called floating. Let's say the Arduino pin is configured as an input. If there is nothing connected to the pin and the program read the state of the pin, Will it be high or will it be low? It's really difficult to tell, but with the resistor connected to VCC, it will ensure that the pin is either high or it's either low. In this case, if the switch is open or this push button is not pressed, the Arduino input pin D4 will be high because the current is going to flow from positive supply through the resistor to D4 because there's no path this side. And when our push button is pressed, D4 is going to reach zero because all the current is going to flow through the resistor, through the push button to ground. Generally, a value of 10K should do the job. We're going to write a simple Arduino code. When our push button is pressed, the LED is going to switch on for three seconds and switch off. Let us build our project on a breadboard so that we can see how you can physically connect a push button to an Arduino board. The first thing we're going to need is an Arduino. We're going to use the Arduino Uno, but any other Arduino board can be used as well. Just rotate it by 90 degrees clockwise. The second thing is going to be our breadboard. You can also connect the switch directly to the pin of the Arduino board, but we're going to prefer to use an external breadboard. We're going to use the mini breadboard. Then we're going to need two resistors, one push button and one LED. The first resistor is going to be a 470 ohms resistor. It's going to be a current limiting resistor for our LED. So the value is going to be 470. And the second one is going to be our pull-up resistor. The value is going to be 10K. We're going to connect our LED to digital pin 7 of Arduino. Let us use the red color. Pull up resistor is going to be connected to VCC. And our push button is going to be connected to D4 in this example. Let us use yellow color. Let us connect our ground as well. Okay, so this is how you can physically connect this component on a breadboard to Arduino board. 
the LED is connected to D7 via a 470 current limiting resistor and our push button is connected to D4 using a pull-up 10k resistor. Okay, before we write our sketch, there's something that is very important to understand when we are working with switches. is a switch debouncing technique. As mechanically, the metal contact of the switch are not perfectly smooth. So when a switch is closed, it doesn't perfectly close immediately. In fact, it bounces open and close so fast before it can stabilize and stay open. So in theory, this is a bounce less switch. When the switch closes, it closes immediately and the current flows through it rise immediately from zero to maximum. But in reality, this kind of switch doesn't exist. With a close-up look with an oscilloscope, it revealed that in practice, the switch bounces open and close for a short period of time before it stabilizes. In normal situation, this bouncing period is so short that it won't even be noticed, but a microcontroller or an Arduino can detect it. There are many ways this can be eliminated in software or in hardware. In software, one can use a counting algorithm where the switch is read periodically, let's say every one millisecond, and it can only be considered to have changed states if it has been in the new state for some number of successive samples, let's say 10, by which time it is considered to have settled. The other method, which is the simplest method, is to use a delay, let's say a 10 millisecond delay, Let's say you read the switch after 10 millisecond delay, then you read it again. If the state of the switch is still the same, then the switch is considered to have settled in that state. Let us start a new project, new. Under the Arduino, I'm gonna select Arduino Uno, okay. In this example, we're gonna need one push button and one LED. Under the output, we're going to insert one LED, A to 3D. We're going to need a push button as well. So depending on your requirement, whether you need a toggle switch or need a slide switch, in this example, we're just going to use a push button. So we're going to select this one. The LED, we're going to connect it to Arduino Digital 7. This is Digital 7. We're going to change the color of our LED to red, but this is just for simulation purposes. Our push button, we're going to connect it to Digital 4. This is Digital 4. The polarity, we're going to select active to low. Basically, this is two ways we can connect a switch to an Arduino or a microcontroller. This is active high and this is active low. In active high, the circuit will pass a logic zero to the input pin when the switch is not pressed and the logic one when the switch is pressed. In active low, the circuit will pass a logic one to the input pin when the switch is not pressed and it's going to pass a logic zero when the switch is pressed. Because we connected our switch in this way, so we're going to select active low. The debounce period, as we have explained before, we're going to set it to 10 millisecond. This will set the time in millisecond to allow a pin chain to settle into a stable state. So we're going to need a while one loop because we're gonna read the status of our switch continuously. The first thing we're gonna read the status of the switch. Gonna use the switch macro. You can also use the read state. This is gonna read the status of the push button. It's gonna return a zero for released and a one when the switch is pressed. You can also use the macro wait until high or wait until low. 
the wait until high will wait until the switch is in the state of high and the wait until low will wait until the switch is in the state of low in this example we're gonna use the read state and we're gonna return the status into a new variable we're gonna create a new variable add new we're gonna name this variable switch state it's gonna be a byte variable so we're gonna check whether the switch is pressed so we're gonna need the condition if state equals to one we're gonna switch on our LED for three seconds LED turn on we gonna switch it on for three seconds three seconds then if state is equal to zero then we're gonna switch off our LED LED switch off and that's all let us run our simulation you can see the LED switch off and if I press it's gonna be on for three seconds then if I press the button again it's gonna be on for three seconds and basically this is how you can control a switch with push and basically this is how you can con control so it doesn't matter whether you're using a push button or a switch let me select a switch you're gonna see it's gonna basically be the same thing let us use a toggle switch a to 3d let me connect the toggle switch to digital 3 gonna change the macro to use this switch read state we're gonna return in the same variable switch state let us run on switch on okay let me change the operation from latching momentarily so that you can behave the same way as a push button you can see it's on for three seconds then it's gonna be off it's gonna be on for three seconds then it's gonna be off so it basically doesn't matter whether you're using a toggle switch or push button or a slide switch or any kind of switch the principle is still gonna be the same let me delete this one okay you cannot delete a component if it's using the code so I'm gonna remove it in the macro gonna use our normal push button then I can be able to delete it save save run still working it's gonna be on for three seconds then it's gonna switch off compile to hex yes finish successfully let us simulate our circuit with proteus run you can see we've got five volt on d4 because our push button is open the current flows from VCC to D4 so when I press my button you can see the LED is on for three seconds then after three seconds it's gonna be off if I press it again it's gonna do the same it's gonna be on for three seconds and after three seconds it's gonna be off thank you guys for watching this tutorial don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials in the future and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.